Hi everyone, in this Figma tutorial we're going to learn how to create uh, this nice mobile drop down menu that we can toggle on and off using our menu button. As you see, also menu button is animated and we can also weave the second level of our drop down items which can also be toggled on and off uh, using our drop down menu items so let's get started uh, first i'm gonna create a text element that says menu item with the font enter uh, font weight is gonna be semi bold and the other settings are going to remain as they are 16 pixel size and 150 percent of line height press shift a to add an auto layout to the text element and i'm going to rename the frame menu item and uh, change its background to menu item bg from the color styles and i'm going to change the menu item frames properties to width is going to be 393 pixels because uh, it's the size that we need for our mobile frame we want our menu item to cover the whole width and horizontal resizing is going to be fixed and vertical resizing is going to be hug and i'm going to continue uh, editing the properties of my menu item auto layout frame and uh, i need a vertical layout since uh, i'm going to place the other variants of the menu item components vertically and i need vertical gap is going to be 16 pixels and horizontal padding is going to be 24 and vertical padding is going to be 16. then i'm gonna create a drop down icon for that i'm selecting the polygon tool and I need a triangle that has 14 pixels width and height and i'm gonna make corner radius one pixel and then i'm gonna drag it to my menu item auto layout frame then i'm gonna select both drop down icon and menu item text and uh, i need a separate auto layout frame for them so i'm gonna do that by uh, pressing shift a and i'm gonna change the resizing props to horizontally fill container and vertically hug after renaming my new auto layout for menu items i'm gonna rename the inner auto layout for menu items just menu item with drop down since we also are going to need another variant at the very top level of our menu item component for our menu items without drop downs and change its auto layout props to horizontal layout and making sure that horizontal gap between items is 16 pixels i'm gonna also change elements alignment to center both horizontally and vertically then to keep things flexible i'm gonna click the menu item text and while making sure my text is aligned to left i'm gonna make it uh, horizontal resizing to a uh, fill container we're gonna continue uh, with creating the open state of our drop down before turning it into a component and adding other variants since uh, it's gonna be easier for a line tool and create a horizontal line uh, which needs to be white and with 20% of opacity and I'm gonna drag it to my menu item with drop down component make its horizontal resizing fill container and uh, we're gonna create our drop down menu items so I'm gonna just basically create a text element that says drop down menu item and I'm gonna change its weight to regular and then I'm gonna drag it to my menu item auto layout under the border and then I'm gonna duplicate it twice to have three drop down menu items then I'm gonna select drop down menu items and the border and add them to a separate auto layout frame which is going to be named just a uh, drop down or dd and i'll make sure my new drop down auto layouts frame properties are set to horizontal resizing is fill container and vertical resizing is hot contents and i'm gonna check and edit its auto layout 
properties it needs to be vertical auto layout and the elements should be aligned to top left and vertical gap needs to be four pixels and uh, top padding needs to be just one pixel while keeping the other paddings zero and then uh, i'm gonna need a separate auto layout for drop down menu items after selecting them i'm gonna press shift a to uh, add them to a separate auto layout frame while changing their horizontal resizing to fill container and uh, keeping vertical resizing to hog and uh, our auto layout properties are going to be changed to while keeping the alignment at top left i'm gonna increase the vertical spacing to eight and uh, top padding is going to be 12. Since we've created everything we need for our drop down, specifically for its open state, which is its most complex state, we can turn it into a component by uh, Control Command K. And uh, we're gonna add a new variant to our menu item component. And uh, I'm gonna rename variant to DD Open since uh, it's going to be open state of our component and properly one to state. And uh, I'll make sure clip content is checked since we don't want drop down menu items appear uh, before our drop down is fully opened and since we need our default menu item not to have a drop down we need our drop down to be opened by clicking anywhere we need a separate variant for a default without drop down state otherwise uh, even if we hide delete the drop down icon Whenever we click a menu item without drop down, it would open a drop down menu. So to make my default drop down menu item without a drop down, basically, I'm gonna uh, duplicate the menu item with drop down auto layout it has. And after that, I'm going to rename it to menu item without drop down and I'm going to delete the menu item with drop down and basically the drop down menu elements it has. And of course, I'm not going to need a drop down icon in the default variant. Next, uh, I'm going to create the closed state of uh, my menu item with drop down. To create that, I'm going to clone the menu item with drop down variant and uh, I'm going to rename this variant DD closed. Uh, since we don't need drop down menu to be visible in DD closed variant, I'm going to hide the DD menu auto layout frame and I'm going to rotate my drop down icon for it to point towards bottom. Then I'm going to switch places of my DD closed and open variants to tidy things up in my component. Then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to prototype mode and uh, drop a connection from the closed state of my drop down components to the open state and define a smart animate interaction with these settings and i'm gonna do the same for another connection that i'm dragging from the open state to the closed state then uh, going back to design tab i'm going to drag an instance of my component to the frame to test it out and of course uh, i'm gonna need an dd closed state of my component to be able to test it so let's see as you see our drop down component works perfectly we need to create menu and close icons so uh, i'm gonna select the rectangle tool and create a 30 by 5 rectangle and uh, i need corners to be perfectly rounded for this size uh, nine will be more than enough then i'm gonna create a clone of it and i need four pixels space between the first one and the new one and by command d i'm gonna duplicate it once more to uh, create this nice menu icon Then i'm gonna select all the rectangles or lines that i've created and create my uh, menu button component and now i need to create a new variant to create the uh, was button state 
of my menu button component. And in order to do that, I'm clicking the plus button where create a component button used to be. And I'm just going to name the second variant. Close and the property one to state. Then I can the transformations that I need to create a close button that I can animate from the menu button's default state. In order to do that, I'm going to select the first line and uh, rotate it 45 degrees, move it to the center. Then I'm also going to rotate the last line that I have in my menu icon 45 degrees and move it to the center as well. And then uh, I'm going to select the line at the middle and make its opacity zero to create the close icon using all three lines in the menu icon to be able to create a smart animate transition between two variants. Then I'm going to go to the prototype mode and drag a connection from the first variant of my menu button with these settings. On tap smart animate is up and 300 milliseconds and uh, the same interaction also from the close state to the default one. Now going back to the design tab, I can just drag an instance of my menu button component to my mobile frame and paste it to its position and then I can test it, right? As you see, our menu button animation is working. Uh, we can start creating our biggest or complete uh, drop-down menu component, right? So uh, I'm gonna start by creating our drop-down menu background. Uh, which is going to be triggered by our menu button. So uh, after creating a rectangle that covers the whole content area, I'm going to change its fill to DD menu BG. And then I'm going to uh, drag an instance of my menu item component to the mobile frame uh, to the very top of my drop down menu. And I'm going to clone my menu item component by dragging it uh, while holding shift and alt and then create another two copies of it by command D. Then I'm going to select the middle ones, second and third ones and change their state to DD closed to uh, create two menu items with drop downs. Then I'm going to select all of the menu item components and uh, with shift A, I'm going to add an auto layout to them and keep the horizontal and vertical resizing contents and keep also the auto layout vertical as uh, when I open one of the drop downs, I need my drop down menu auto layout to be resized vertically. I'm going to keep the vertical gap one pixel. And of course, uh, I'm going to change my menu items auto layout frames name to DD menu items. Then I'm going to test if the resizing and all functionality works as I need. As you see, our drop down menu is working. Now we can create our biggest drop down menu components, right? Since I'm going to toggle its visibility with my menu button here, I'm going to select it. And I'm also going to uh, select all of my menu items and the menu background layer and turn all of them into a single component, which is going to be named DD menu. To be able to uh, continue building my DD menu component, I'm going to drag it outside of my frame first and add a new variant to it. And I'm going to add another variant to it. Second variant is going to be its open state and of course property one is going to be renamed as state now we can hide the elements that we don't need in the default or closed state of our dd menu components right and those would be dd menu items and the background that i use for them and of course i need to change the menu button in the open state variant and i need to change its state to close then i can go to the prototype tab 
and selecting the menu button i can drag a connection from the first variant to the second one and these settings looks okay to me and of course since i need to be able to hide my drop down menu with the close button i'm gonna do the same using the close button to the first variant now i can go back to design tab and drag in an instance of my drop down menu component to the mobile frame and test it right i'm gonna take it to its position and by shift space i'm going to test it as you see i can toggle on and off drop down menu and menu items hope you liked the tutorial be sure to check my other figma tutorials at the end screen and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and see you in the next one